everyone my name is Kamini Singh and this is my YouTube channel that is facilitate to educate where I am going to help you in your learning process to begin with we are going to start with the preparation of NTA UGC net especially for paper 2 of environmental science that will also help you in people development and environment section of paper 1 so this is the topic that we are going to study today and let's get started In this video we will be talking about the ozone layer depletion that is a very important topic from the competitive exams point of view and it is almost asked in all the competitive exams so let us start so we'll talk about the ozone layer so ozone is a trace gas that is it is present in very small quantity in the atmosphere if say there are 10 million molecules of air around us so only out of those three molecules will be of ozone right so it is the combination of three oxygen atoms this you already know that ozone is O3 and it is the stratospheric ozone whenever we are talking about the ozone layer we are specifically talking about the ozone that is present in the stratosphere so here are the five layers of the atmosphere first is troposphere which also contains some ozone which is man-made ozone and it is harmful for us so if you have to read about this more you can go to this link and uh, know what is it and what are the harmful effects second is the stratosphere about which we are talking here it is the stratospheric ozone layer that we are talking third is mesosphere thermosphere and exosphere right so it is also known as the good ozone as i have told you that tropospheric ozone is known as also known as the bad ozone but this is known as good ozone we will talk about it why is it known as the good ozone so whenever we move out you must have uh, applied sunscreen sometime or the other whether in summers or also in winters these days we apply sunscreen to protect ourselves from the harmful uv radiations right we need to protect our skin so there is a natural sunscreen that is present and which is the ozone layer that we have already talked about so this ozone layer absorbs 98 percent damaging uv radiations that could harm us that could harm our skin but it is protecting us from that and only for 2% we are applying this sunscreen. So you can understand how important and how good this ozone layer is for us. So this, this stratospheric ozone is also known as good ozone because it acts as a natural sunscreen for us and also for other plants and animals it is useful because if it is not there we will see the effects further. So now we will talk about the ozone layer depletion. Basically ozone layer has all the three that is atomic oxygen that is O, diatomic oxygen that is O2 and ozone that is O3. It contains all of these. They all are in equilibrium with one another. So O, O2 and O3 are in equilibrium with one another. How are they in equilibrium? They all interconvert between one another. So here you can see the arrow that is on both sides that is indicating that O2 can be converted into O and O can be converted into O2. Similarly, O3 is interconvertible into O2 and O2 is convertible into O3. So this casually happens in the ozone layer and it is maintained by the nature itself. So now we will talk about the ozone hole. So this is the most misinterpreted and misunderstood word. We always think that whenever we are seeing ozone hole, so there is a hole in the ozone layer that is present in the stratosphere, but this is not true. It Ozone hole is nothing but the thinning of ozone layer. As you can see in the picture, you consider this as the earth surface and this is the stratospheric ozone layer that is present. And here you can see the ozone layer is thinner than the other sides, right? So here we, we can say that there is a ozone hole. So thinning of ozone layer is basically ozone hole. It was discovered first in 1984. This you need to remember very clearly because this has been asked in a lot of examinations. And the major reason behind this ozone hole is the chlorofluorocarbons or the CFCs. You must have heard about it a lot of times. Now we'll see how it is creating the ozone hole or how the thinning of ozone layer occurs. So before talking about the effects of CFC, let's first see what are the sources where it is coming from. The first source is the solvent in cleaners. Second is the aerosol. So aerosols are nothing but the colloidal suspension of particles dispersed in air or gases. You can see the containers here and you must have seen them uh, when somebody is painting. They are using these containers, these kind of containers. So third are the air conditioners that we use to 
cool our rooms or in offices as well and the most important are the refrigerators that we use at our home also the plastic the foam that is used to make plastic is also a source of cfc so what is cfc cfc is nothing but chlorofluorocarbon and it is a combination of chlorine fluorine and carbons so what happens in the stratospheric ozone is when cfc reaches the stratospheric ozone layer the cfc is gives off the chlorine atom when in presence of uv radiations right so out of the chlorine fluorine and carbon the chlorine is given out and what happens with this chlorine the general reactions in the stratosphere is when chlorine is not present when there is no cfc in the atmosphere so the general reactions that occur in the atmosphere or stratosphere are that 2O2 combined to give one uh, atomic oxygen and one ozone, right? So here ozone is formed. Then what happens is the ozone combines with the atomic oxygen and gives off the two molecules of diatomic oxygen. So this keeps on going, right? So this uh, maintains the equilibrium in the stratosphere and also the concentration of O3 molecule that is ozone. And nature maintains the production and degradation of ozone in stratosphere itself, right? So here we see that when the UV radiations are falling on the uh, O2, the O gets separated and O3 is formed, right? And then O3 and O combine to form 2 O2. So this is the general reaction. Now what happens in the presence of Cl or the uh, chlorine that comes out of the CFC, we'll see. So reaction in presence of CFCs. Now the chlorine had come out of the CFC. Now what will happen is ozone in the presence of chlorine will form one diatomic oxygen that is there and OCl is also formed. Now what happens is OCl is there and we know that atomic oxygen is also there in the atmosphere. So they both combine and again a molecule of diatomic oxygen is formed and Cl is given out. So here we see that ozone went into the reaction as reactant but did not come out as a product so here ozone is depleting ozone is decreasing in concentration and what is forming is the o2 right and we also see that what happened to chlorine was that chlorine is also the reactant as well as the product in the reaction so it went into the reaction as a reactant and it also came out of the reaction as the product so this can again go into the reaction and there will be chain reactions like these it can all again go back as a reactant and this process will follow and hence the ozone is depleted right so this is what happens in the presence of CFC out of which the CL is coming out. So a major question that may arise in your mind is why do we only see a ozone hole in the Antarctica and why not all around the world or all throughout the stratosphere? The answer to this is divided into four major points. First is the distribution of halogen gases. As we already know that the northern hemispheres consumes more CFC, right? So there should be a hole in the Arctic circle or in the northern hemisphere. But we see this in the southern hemisphere is because there is distribution of halogen gases all throughout the stratosphere due to the mixing of air, right? So they, when the air is mixed efficiently, the halogen gases or the CFCs move all around the world and it reaches to the south pole as well. Now is the low polar temperature. Low polar temperature, the both the poles are having low polar temperature, but the temperature of southern pole is much lower than the northern pole. Isolated conditions are required for the ozone hole to occur. So isolated conditions are more in the southern pole that is in the Antarctica due to the low polar temperature. So these are related these two points. Last is the most important point is the formation of polar stratospheric clouds. So polar stratospheric clouds are formed both in Antarctica and Arctic uh, circle but it is uh, formed for like five to six months in Antarctica and for only 10 to 60 days in winters in the northern pole. So why are these important? These act as the reactive or reaction sites for the CFCs. These are the reaction sites for CFCs to give off the CL and which takes part in the uh, depletion of ozone layer. So 
these are the major points first is the distribution of halogen gases then low polar temperature isolated conditions and formation of polar stratospheric clouds so these all are responsible for the ozone hole to occur in the antarctica we'll talk about the health effects of ozone layer depletion we'll see that why even we are concerned if the ozone is depleting or the ozone layer has a hole so first thing is that it can damage the dna if the harmful uv radiations directly uh, reach our skin and then beneath it it can damage the dna and mutations may occur then second is the sunburns it can cause sunburns it can cause skin cancers aging of skin cataract and snow blindness so snow blindness happens when the cornea absorbs the uvb radiations and a high dose of uvb radiations causes inflammation of the cornea which is also known as the snow blindness so these are the health effects of ozone layer depletion ozone layer depletion are firstly it can damage the crops second is the global warming it is a very vast topic that we will cover in other videos third is the if it affects the uh, marine and fresh water life so it is said that if there is a ozone hole or if the ozone layer depletes the uh, growth of planktons may be affected adversely and hence if the planktons are basically the producers of marine life and fresh water life so if it will not be there the marine life may be destroyed completely so these are the three other effects of ozone layer depletion i hope you understood all the concepts and if you have not uh, yet subscribed to the channel and for more such informative videos you can subscribe by clicking here and uh, you can also share it with your friends whoever are um, preparing for the competitive exams so thank you so much